All right, guys. We're back with a big old model. Um, it's a Mandalorian rifle from the new, I don't want to say TV show, streaming show, whatever it is. This one, uh, I've actually been working on for three weeks. So, uh, let's see if we can get it assembled. I'm going to move you guys here for a minute. By the way, that's basically the entire kit. So, let me get y'all repositioned here. Now, the order I'm going to do things here, you don't have to do them this way. Um, uh, there's just, you know, a few different steps here that I want to take. Um, moreover, just to show you guys and explain some things to you and... Uh, first off, you got your big old bag of screws here. Let's get those dumped out. Uh, this big old screw here is going to be for the shoulder strap. It's not a 3D printed part. It's steel. And, uh, um, the matching end to this actually comes on Fan Fiction Props holster that he's making. It's the quick release, uh, just exactly like the one that's in the show so um there's that in there i have a couple springs for the pop-up chamber and for the trigger um, you got you end up having three of these big screws because we got screws everywhere in this thing uh then a random assortment there's only one of these uh, then there's the set screw which you know headless screw takes allen wrench to, to install it that's for the trigger let me get these other ones sorted out here um, there's a bunch of 10 millimeter long allens and then there is a bunch uh, there's four 10 millimeter long flat blades which will hold the um, the trim piece on the back of the stock on and then there's two flat blades that will hold the trim piece on that goes on top of the stock. Um, here, I'll just show you. That goes right here. It's the little filler panel that, that will go on the back. And then you've got these little dudes. Uh, four of these actually hold on the hatches. Because that's what I've done on this is I've put some removable hatches. Um for electronics and stuff kind of like if your body's together you can take those two screws out pull the hatch out and all of that's hollow in there that has a passage that goes straight out to the barrel and you can go run all the way down the barrel because the barrel's hollow um, with this metal tube magnets just stuck to it um, and then this front part up here it's very hard to find space. You look at this big old rifle and you're like, oh, there's got to be all kinds of space for electronics. Well, there's not really because you don't want to weaken stuff. Uh, but I've made another hatch up front that will get screwed, that you can screw in there. And, you know, it's pretty decent size. You can probably fit a battery. I don't know about 18650 or whatever, but you can definitely fit a battery or two in there. Um, let's see. Okay first thing we're going to do is on the stock here now on the stock this actually um, you will glue together and then once you glue it together you'll use one of these bigger screws that will go right down inside this hole and the reason you want to glue it together first is because the way I'm printing these I mean I'm given it's if you go ahead and do glue and put it together and really focus on holding it side to side top to bottom until it sets it's hardly any finishing work that needs to be done uh, let me get my glue over here and I'm using that, that what same glue I always do it's that Bob Smith uh, maxi cure CA but you can use regular thick super glue works great also no biggie biggie um, Right, good it's not stopped up it 
glue never usually stops up but the other day i went to open it and it was like i, I don't know if i didn't screw the top on and by the way make sure you put it together the right way because you're going to regret it if you don't all right, let me get that all where it needs to be so it's all nice and flush and center See if I can glue my finger to it. You know, that's always good. Ah, oh, crap. Forgot to refill that bottle. Important stuff right there. And now I'm not blowing on it to cure it. I'm blowing it to actually get that to go down inside and make good contact with that glue. Still not there yet. But yeah, this this was actually, I had a blast doing this model just because it was out of the norm. It's a larger size, but not only larger size, it was so many details and so complicated. They did a, this is one of the first ones that I actually got really excited about that in the Star Wars universe that they've done lately. Um, while well, it's drying you can take the screw and drop it down in there and now you're going to need a normal number two screwdriver for all of this and these are very long winded screws in other words there's a, a long ways to go to thread them in and that's just because you want as many threads biting as possible and I'm kind of rushing it here my glue hasn't fully set, but we got a lot to cover, and I'm trying not to have a super duper long video again. Of course, this one, there's not going to be much I can do about it. But when you're screwing these big long screws in like this, there's a lot of friction, and those threads get really, really super hot, and they will actually soften the, the filament which is which is perfectly fine what i always do is i get the screw into where it's about to tighten up and back it up just a just about a half a turn and let the screw completely cool or let it cool off in there and what that'll do is that will actually set filament threads and when it actually cools you can torque the crap out of this and it will tighten down like nobody's business there we go now that is a super solid piece now. <laughs> I mean, super solid. Um, of course, you're going to be doing all this. Now, this part right here you'll do before you paint because, of course, you want to glue that, screw it together to make it solid, and then you want to paint it. You know, so, you know, if you do get it off a little bit, you can do a little sanding, you know, filler primer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the other piece that goes on is going to be our the rear trim and that trim piece um, is only really visible in a few scenes and a few pictures that I found uh, but it's it's metal um, I'm actually going to put some a couple of reference pictures in the um, in the assembly folder um, for people to be able to get like paint colors and all that good stuff and boy there's not a screw in this world I hate more than a flat blade screw I've never been a fan I never will be a fan that's what the guy said that invented Phillips screws he was like I don't know who come up with this crap of a flat blade screw I mean I don't know if that's true or not that's just it's just my ramblings. I'm, I'm assuming the Phillips head screw was created by somebody named Phillips. I don't know. But whoever he was, he was an awesome dude. And then Alan, <laughs> if it was actually somebody named Alan that come up with the Alan head, that dude, he was like, I see the potential in the Phillips, but golly, we need something that will hold without having to put a bunch of pressure. Smart guy, or girl, or lady woman, not sure. Um, see 
just a sec. Get these four screws in here. So, you know, of course, you'll do your stock in wood, make it look like wood, wood grain, you know, whatever. There's a lot of techniques on on YouTube, of, you know, about how doing painting wood, wood grain and stuff. Uh, and then, of course, this is kind of the same metal as the rest of the gun. Also, on here, there's this indention up here that I actually made, and I'm going to link a, a to the switch and I found it on Amazon so it'd be easier for people to get if they're doing electronics but for you to mount a one of the little tactile pressure not tactile switches but little arm switches with the arm facing down because when you mount the trigger in here the trigger if I not throw it everywhere the trigger has this little arm right here that when it's in here and it rotates that arm will move up well, that is specifically right above that. So when you pull the trigger, it will activate the switch, which I'll show you in a minute when we're doing the body, that from here you can run the wiring up, and there's actually a wiring path that cuts, snakes its way through the body uh, and ends up here in this main chamber. Here's the first part of the path that goes down through here, and it will come out. And the other parts that go in here have the same matching path that go all the way through. So like when you all this gets screwed together, it's a path that will come all the way down, all the way through the, the trigger guard. That's what these recesses, so any, any direction you want to run the wire, you can get from here to the trigger switch, and then through the back of the barrel all the way down to the fork. Um, let me get most of this back out of my way real quick. Okay, so we're basically done with the stock for right now. There's nothing else to really do to it. Um, the next part, let's go ahead and just go through and do the barrel real quick, uh, the fork, and this is the, the fork mount. Now, I put a screw to go on the back end here. It's not necessary, but I did it for strength, because whenever you make a hole in a hole, of course, it's printing more walls in there, and then you've got this screw in here that threads halfway into here so where this was a very thin design this is no longer a thin design this is rock solid from here to here uh, also on the forks i've also made it to where it's slightly flexible you know of course they're breakable you can break them but i wanted some flex in it so you know that's that's some pretty good flex uh, now, of course, you set on your rifle if you're carrying it or you drop it or something. I mean, you can break anything if you put enough enough effort into it. But um, basically, you just go through here. And really, you don't even have to put any glue on here. But pay attention. There's a little square in there, and there's a square in there. You want to put that matching the same direction because that is your wire path. And if you don't put them in the same direction, well, then you don't have a wire path. So that's just just a little, and there's screw down in there. So let's go ahead and get our screw in there. And my, all these big ones are long-winded. And they're, they generate a lot of heat screwing them in. So again what i always do i mean you could just keep on going and going and going and eventually you can pull all your threads out if you want um but and i don't ever use a drill to put these in to make it go faster because again the faster you screw it in the more heat you're generating and that's just you just heat's not you know heat your friend to a point when you're dealing with any plastics or, or resin or filament or whatever term you want to use. There we go. That was hard. Fork's done. And that square, I don't know if you can see down in there, comes out to the center to where you could literally mount a really bright blue LED like in there so that you could activate it and kind of make it look like the, uh, the cattle prod whatever you want to call it, uh, function, whatever. Um, and like I said, 
you can do what I'm about to show you either way. You can build from the center of the rifle or you can build to the uh, end of the rifle or from the end of the rifle back. We're just going to do end of the rifle back right now just because it's a little easier. All these magnets keep sticking to my stuff. You've got a solid aluminum bar that's going to be that will be the lower bar of the barrel and then you have the tube the steel tube that will be uh, for the center of the barrel basically the hexagon shape the biggest thing about this is there's only probably one place that I even suggest using two-part epoxy on it and it's basically where this barrel goes into the main body uh, and by the way, there's the passage right there. So the barrel comes out. There's an opening in, coming into the electronics chamber. And then the opening going forward to the battery chamber. But that's about the only place. But the way I'm going to build it right now, you're, we're going to end up with the barrel completely done with that sticking out like, like that by the time we're done. And then we can join the two halves together. But basically on this one... Uh, all you need to do is this is the same on both ends but it you know and it's a hexagon so you can't really screw it up too bad and the thing is you could go ahead and feed if you're going to do electronics you can pre-feed your wire through here and then feed it through each piece as you're loading it it's not necessary because you can go back and feed it straight down through the barrel uh, get that in there Get that sprayed. And you know, a lot of people will want to like coat the barrel and slide it down in there and like have glue over. You can do that. Uh, it's not necessary. I don't, I don't think, I don't see a reason to do it. Um, but you can if you want. But if you do, don't put it, your glue or resin on the pipe. Always put it down inside the surface you're sliding into. That way when you push it in, you can push it in and turn it. And it will pull pull the glue down inside and smear it around the pipe and stuff. If you put it on the pipe when you push it in, the piece is just going to wipe it off and it's just going to clog, you know, clump out on you. But um, so that's the barrel piece, like all the way to the end in there. And I am going to just so it'll hold it in place just a bit. Um, for right now, I'm just going to put just a bit in there. And I'm just going to spin it a little bit. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, on these pieces, your little grommets, these grommets go facing the fork. So, depend, no merit, you know, the thing is, is you can't put this piece on wrong because this hexagon insertion is not the is not the same size down here. So what you're going to want to do is just make sure these grommets face forward because this rear body that goes back here actually has a grommet that will glue in. So all the 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 grommets are forward facing grommets on the here. So. Yep, all dry, all good. All right, and I, I put all these to where they they go together perfectly straight. Now you can clock them wrong, you know that's not in line with that. So all you have to pay attention to is that your clocking is in line, and that your grommets face the fork. Now if the grommets you screw up and they don't face the fork, that's fine, but it won't be screen accurate, I guess, if, you know, if that's a really, really, really big deal. Which, if you're like me, it is a big deal. That's one reason it takes me so long to get some models done, because I become obsessed about the details. And, uh, actually, if it wasn't for my buddy Michael at Fan Fiction Props... I probably would get hung for a long time on a lot of details. I'm not saying that he says, you know, screw it, it's close enough. He's just like, 
it looks identical quit obsessing so anyways and then your next piece it'll only go on one way i think yeah see this way the 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 hexagon doesn't even fit the way you want to go is that way and you can put a little glue around the bar put your little glue and by the way i've already had way too much coffee today and it's cold outside too so you know i've been drinking the heck out of coffee and just staying warm it's freezing out in my shop there we go so, that all looks good. Put a little pressure on it. Wipe off any googly booglies. And I tell you what, this thing already is like, you could, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it because somebody will be like, but you said you could beat someone with it. I did not say that and I'm not going to say that. And if you say I said it, I'll deny it. Anyways. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this before we forget because it's really really important. We don't forget this because if you do once you glue this together You're screwed. You'll never you've got to put your bar in there so uh, Let's go ahead and run our little if I don't run out of glue here first I've been so unprepared for this trying to get all this other stuff done and then I turn around and I didn't even bother to go in and clean up any of these parts man we're already at 22 minutes on this all right let that sit for a second all right now let's go ahead and take our our bar here and of course, when you spray paint your bar, just don't get all googly, you know, or just like glob it on there. It's an aluminum bar. It really doesn't need much finishing. You can just hit it with black or, you know, the gunmetal gray, whatever color it is you choose to do. And there's gapping spacing in that's already made into these to compensate for a, 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 layer, a, two, a layer or two of really light painting for this bar. Um, all right, so then this piece, and there we go. And that's what I was talking about. You end up having actually a lot of it that per protrudes into the rest of the body. But I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to take just a little glue, and I'm going to get harder to hold with one hand here. And put me a little glob in there. Put that in there, spin it a little bit. And I would not bother trying to glue it up here in these clamps and stuff. It's just, it's not necessary. And all you're going to do is make it your life difficult and get crap all over your, your model and stuff. So, all right. There is that big solid piece of barrel. And so then our next piece, now this, this is the piece I was talking about. I would go ahead and, you know, just do your glue for the hexagon here. Do your glue down in the hole for here. And then we'll be done for this right now. Then when we go back, what you're going to do is what I suggest is maybe some two part epoxy down in, down in here where the barrel is going to slide into this. But then all down in here, still the same thing, thick super glue or CA glue. Um, because all here, around this edge, as you can see, and the front of this all makes contact. Well, then by the time you're done, that metal barrel slides through here and all the way into the body. So you're solid from here all the way forward. And I actually uh, changed the print orientation. All of this stuff prints standing up, so all of your print lines are this way into here and then the main body switches to the print lines this way one that makes it extremely rigid and hard in here as far as flexing that way 
but then you're also combining those two different directions and then the metal in there uh, it's it's rock solid that being said where there's a wheel there's a way anything is breakable get my glue all around my edge and just remember if you do use the two-part epoxy which i'm not going to use in this just because i don't have time to sit here and wait for it to dry uh, showing you guys but if you do use two-part epoxy just make sure the back side uh, your wiring path is not clogged up and put a little pull pressure on there And also another thing, when we mount the scope, there's three screws here that hold on the two different individual pieces of the scope bracket. What that's going to do is those screws will actually go into the scope through the scope bracket into the barrel. And the way I've also made it is they will actually set and and hold, pinch in three places on that metal. So from here forward, from here back. Everything is just as tied in together as, as much as humanly possible. And I've look at that. I glued my thumb. Anyways, all right. I can't really show you, but there you go. That whole big old long barrel uh, is basically done. Okay, we're going to move to the body right now because this is the one that's got more parts and more things and magnets and blah, blah, blah. Uh, if y'all have watched any of the other assembly videos, my little tip about doing the magnets so you don't screw them up like I have many times in the past. Uh, about taking a Sharpie and leaving two of them stuck together. Because you want them to attract. You don't want them to push apart. Uh, you want you have them push apart, then, you know, it. well, it's just not going to work. Let that dry for a second. Okay. Basically, 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 in my brain, in my mind, I'm reciting back to the black, black to the back, black to the back, right, so the black would go back, and then when I get ready to do the corresponding one in here, the black would go to the back, and then if you do that, then you, you're pretty much always going to have your orientation correct, okay. So, make sure that I'm all clear, which I, I am. I'm going to put a drop in here. This is the slide switch that, that releases the pop-up uh, chamber. Um, the shell chamber, bullet chamber, whatever you want to call it. Press that down in there and let that dry for a minute or two. Set that off right there and come over here holes down inside there it matches that and normally I just did this opposite of what I normally do I normally put this one in first so I'm holding both so there's more magnet to hold on to but remember black black to the back in there okay I'll just let that sit for a minute. We're we up to almost 30 minutes. Okay. Might have to cut this into two. I don't know. All right. Anyways, um, that's almost done. Now, the, the installation of this, it's kind of difficult because there. Okay. That's installed. It's done. Um, this dude right here, this goes on. And I don't know if any of y'all have noticed. Now, the gapping, of course, is to compensate for when you paint, the gapping will close up. But in the actual show prop and everything else, there's a split here and a split here because this is exactly how they get to that switch and spring and stuff in there. I chose not to use a spring just because the magnet functioned great and it makes actually kind of a cool clicking sound. So, you know, there's that. And on this one, you're going to need two of the 10 millimeter Allen heads. And let me go ahead and get my correct bit. 
And what you're going to do is you are going to put the front one in. And just go until it tightens down. And that dude will need to go in there. All right. And then all right, that's all good. Um, before we get too far, I'm going to show you, because it's a little bit easier to put this in, like right now, just because of the, so none of the other stuff is in the way. The shoulder strap bolt goes right here, and what you're going to want to do is just do your best to just basically hand start it and look at it this way and make sure it's straight and look at it this way and make sure it's straight take like an allen wrench or something and put it to where so you can twist it make sure it's going to go in straight and once it's going in straight then yeah this one is kind of it, trust me, it bites in there like crazy. And then you can stop it at whatever angle. Once you like, if you're putting this on a str on the on the holster or whatever, you can end up. It'll probably hang just about like that with the hole at about that angle. Um, get that out of the way. But yeah, that's in there. That is rooted into this body, which this body has a hole for one of these attaching the stock to the body and it runs all the way up in here then you have two screws that also hold the stock on that go in here then you have a longer screw that for the trigger assembly goes in all the way through here through this piece into the body so there's there's a lot of connecting points and stuff in here that make this really 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 stout um, so there's that and get the trigger stuff out of the way we don't need that right now all right these two little dudes right there uh we need the chamber these are kind of the little retainers that go on the sides of this um and we need a spring really basically all you have to do is set the spring down in the hole and on the bottom there's a matching there's a matching hole and what I'm going to do is kind of look here and now I've got the spring sitting in both holes go at an angle and just pull these two arms apart and make sure that moves good and if you want to you can clip it down okay so we're good there um, these two dudes One will get glued on right there, and the other one will get glued on right there. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and not glue these on backwards because it faces forward. Um, and some of these parts, like normal or kind of raw because you know I always take my prototype parts and they end up being you know I do my assembly pictures or videos and they end up being what goes on my gray wall um, because I never have a chance to paint anything which you know my actually it's my silver wall not my gray wall uh, I'm actually starting to like the way my silver wall is looking it's all in silver. And it, I don't know. It just looks cool. Yeah, it'd look all cool with them all finished and stuff. But I don't know. It's kind of like... I don't know. It's like taking everything and painting it all white. And just it changes the looks of everything. But anyways. Um, I guess I could spray those. Get that going a little. Wow. Okay. 
And then there's, you know, there's your shell to go, you know, to load in there and stuff. So, I guess, did I not get any? Oh, I did. I just didn't get any scorch for it on there. Where are we at? 35 minutes. All right, and then we've got our side panels. On the actual prop prop, these two side panels are actually all one piece that goes as a surround piece. But, but what I did to give space for electronics was, I actually divided these up, if I can hold my mouth just right. Oh, there we go. I divided these up so once they're on here, from the bottom, you actually have your chamber this the door cover and it simulates the exact same thing but it gives you the ability to get to the inside for electronics so you know that good stuff All right. um, let me go ahead and glue that dude on and my bottle just fell over as long as it doesn't glue to the table And see, it gives you clearance in there. And there is a detail on this rifle. You know, I've seen quite a few people, whether they create a model or they draw it up or, or whatever, that they seem to miss and I'm not going to say what it is but when somebody sees it they can go back and look at my model and be like oh dude he's got he 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 did the detail correctly um, it was actually something I saw after I created uh, these specific parts and uh, it's getting heavy now all right squeeze all that dude together we will let that sit there for a few and kind of just set up. And while we do that, we're going to grab boom, boom. We need trigger guard, trigger, set screw, and spring. And let me find my right size. That's it. Or my set screw. All right, trigger. There's a hole back there. There's a hole right there. So basically, I take the trigger and just set it in there at an angle like that. Don't do that. Take it and get in there. Get in there. All right, now it's in the hole. Just take your hand and kind of hold it back and line that hole up. Did I go through? I did. Yay. First try. And of course it doesn't tighten down anywhere. Just get it in there to where it's flush and clears both sides. Yay. And see now that's what I was talking about. That pops up and can trigger the switch that's in that's up in the stock. So that's the, sh the, the, the hole to mount it. And when you push like that, it will trigger your switch for you. And there's an offset for the wire to come out from under the switch and go forward. But I'll go over that again in a second. All right, so that's your whole trigger set up. We need to go ahead and put our trigger guard on there. Um, and you'll have to pull the trigger back just a tad to let it sit down in there. But go ahead and dab it, dab it. All right, get that in there. I'm not hiding anything when I, <laughs> I move off to the side. I'm trying not to squirt. I'm trying to hold this bottle at, in my tongue at the right angle to get the last little bit of juice out of that bottle and not squirt it all over my table and stuff. I mean, it's not anything. I mean, it evaporates into nothing. Say it's my hand's like wet looking, but it'll evaporate into nothing. 
Um, okay, so that is set. So there's your your trigger guard and all that. Basically, from from this is where the barrel goes in. From here, the switch and all that back, you can unscrew and take this all apart. Take the doors off for the electronics. You can unscrew this. Take this out of the way. You can unscrew and take the entire stock off. Put it back on. Um, was wanting to make it all modular, and then you know, of course, bam. Let's load up a shell. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, the stock does go on before this. This is this goes on after the stock's attached. Um, let's go ahead and we're gonna put our bottom electronic door on. Or actually, you know what? I'll wait until I glue that on the front for you guys. Um, where are we at? 41 minutes. Uh, we're just a clocking along here. Okay. So anyways, you've got the big long, there's a long screw. Um, there it is. That goes in right there. And then you will have two screws that go in right here. Then not only that, but you've got, when you put the trigger guard on, the trigger guard gets screwed all the way through the body here and anchored here. So it's anchored and like screwed in like crazy everywhere. Um, let me kind of speed up here just a tad because this I'm hoping that this doesn't shut off on me and make me start out like at a second part because that's just going to suck. I hate dealing with multiple part videos. But anyways, see how nice our seam is right there where, where we glued it and screwed, glued it and screwed it and tattooed it. Um, this is very much a long winded um, screw here. It's one of these things, just start you an episode of something and start watching it and get to screwing. Yeah, I know what went through everybody's mind just then. So. Trying to keep it G-rated. Kids love Star Wars too. Long, 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 long way. And no, those aren't fake grunts. You can, you can bow down on this and bow up, bow down. Whichever direction you prefer to bow, you can do that. Uh, all right, 10 millimeter Allens, two of them. Everybody always asks me, why do you do everything in metric? Uh, just, I was a mechanic for like 14 years. And I got into machining, doing machining work throughout all that. And all this fractional decimal crap. And then somebody saying, I need a, a, a 5 64th. Or they'll throw a decimal at me. It's like, you know what? The metric system, and no, I'm not trying to make anybody mad. This is my opinion, only my opinion. The metric system is just a much more refined, simplified, easy, and precise system. And that's just what I always, that's what I learned machining in. It's what I transferred into doing design. Um, and... Basically, the only thing on here that's not a metric thing is the set screw in here, and that's a 440, three-quarter inch long. The rest, everything else is metric. Everything I even design in metric. I draw in metric. That's just the way it is. Um, okay. This together, um, basically, that goes in there. You need one of those. And another, uh, another button Allen. So, let me get the correct, is that the correct size? It might be, it might not be. It, it be, it be. Alright. And, Michael is actually at, at Fan Fiction Props, is painting up one of these right now. Um. He does, he does most of my picture, well he does basically all my painted pictures just because I don't have time to do this, but he does it because he also makes, you know, matching holsters and 
Uh, we do a lot of collaborating together. Uh, I grabbed the wrong thing. Because <laughs> it's much nicer when you work with work with people. Um, and and you design your stuff to work together and work work well together because you end up more cohesive thing but not only for you but like well for me and him but for you guys too um bzam we have trigo do 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 it's my sad sound effects pew pew anyways um this piece gets screwed on here don't pay attention to that line like i said all of these are my prototype prints uh, the other that this side will actually look like this side without a seam in it that had a seam just because I was throwing everything on a build plate and Not paying attention to My seams or anything whenever I was doing the print files These are are these are the two little six millimeter flat blades that's in the kit those screw it's just a little metal finishing plate that's on his rifle. Ain't that beautiful? I, lo I just love this rifle so much. It's so weird looking and so odd, but also so cool at the same time. Um, it's just, I don't know, just cool. Just me, just cool. Uh, all right, let's get back to the barrel real quick. 46 minutes all right um what we're going to do is actually we'll just put the scope on real quick never mind that noise in the background never mind pay no attention to the man behind the curtain um we've got to put the scope on okay the scope brackets just real quick they their thickness size here they're thick and it's a, it's not too noticeable unless you've already have them painted but there's a bevel here at the front edge there's a matching bevel at the front edge and that bevel goes facing forward uh, th that bevel is actually on his rifle and let me get one two three of the little ones to put the front scope on let me change out my bits here uh. My son always tells me, he said, Dad, you, you spend too much time working. And he's right, I do. I try. I work throughout the day uh, in my studio, and then I wait for him to get home from school, and I wait for him, and then spend the rest from about 4 o'clock on with him, um, just chilling, playing games and stuff. And then he goes to bed, and then I end up going... Like, I'm going to finish one more thing on this model, and then one, two, three o'clock in the morning it comes, and it's like, oh, crap, i got to get up and get him ready and take him to school. Uh, that's about the only positive I can say about being single, is I don't, there's only one person I have to really focus on right now, and that's him. Um... Sorry, it's probably oversharing. I'm just, I'm was thinking about something he said to me this morning on the way to school. But anyways, there's an Allen, and then you need a long, a 10 millimeter Allen and a short Allen to put this one on. And short ones in the back, long ones in the front. There's a stud right here, like a square stud, matching stud. Can't can't really go wrong there. I mean, I guess you could go wrong, but if you put it on this way, I think you can very well tell what the problem is before you even get there so um let's put the long one in first forty nine all right then we can drop the shorty in and this is how I made the scope detachable because that was one of the things in watching the show is I was like, this dude, he's constantly pulling the scope off this rifle. And actually, I think it's kind of cool. But uh, what I've done is I've made it to where we've got this whole other group of magnets here. We'll put in two matching magnets. And what'll happen is 
it's going it's got some recesses here so one it's going to help you know be able to knock it off and stuff's not really going to happen you're going to have to pull straight out on it but we'll actually test it here because this is the first time of me testing it um every time i got to a point i'm like all right cool i'm going to i'm going to test uh the scope and the magnets real quick I've ended up making a change to the barrel or this or that or whatever. It's like, okay, well, next time, next reprint, I'll, I'll, uh, do that. All right, let me get that blacked out, blacked out. All right, do that. Get my squirty squirt. I'm going to go, I'm going to put both of these in. I'm going to globby globby. Globby, globby. And now let's have both the magnets pushed together and then I just you know, slide one off. And I just use both of them because it just makes life a lot easier to handle it. I'm trying to get them down in there. Eh, denied. All right. Set that right there for just a second. Remember, black to the back, black to the back, black to the back. Or we will have a self-ejecting scope if we screw that up. Which would be kind of funny if it wasn't your scope, you know. If it was someone else's scope, it would be quite funny. The bad part is, is I've got this huge bottle of this Insta set. Out in my shop and I just keep forgetting to bring it in here to my model room come on come on come on come on where's that tube at there's a tube it's like trying to get the last bit of Windex or something out of a bottle you turn it to where you can get the tube down in the corner I think I think I got that set pretty good on that one Watch me pull one of these magnets out. Oh my lord, look how bad that works. That's just so horrible. Oh man, it won't come off that way. And look at that. Oh, it's self-centering too. Oh, it, that's just a shame. That works so bad. That's such a horrible thing to do right there. <laughs> oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Let me see how far I can... Oh, look at that. Self-returning, self-centering. Gotta love it. Uh, also, you've got um, two scope lenses to put down here uh, on that lip there and on that lip there. Uh, you've got to peel the paper off. I leave them on there just to keep it from getting scratched where I itch, laser etched into that. Here, I'll pull it out. I think that reflection is getting to you. Um, kind of mimic the uh, little reticle display of his as well as I could uh, actually Michael fan fiction props did that for me I'm not going to take any credit for it if it looks bad I'm going to take he's going to take all the credit and if it looks good then um, great I had a reminder going off uh, anyways it was a reminder to look at my reminders those are the best reminders anyways we are down to the mating. <gasps> oh, ain't that beautiful? That's just. I'm in love. All right. Anyways, I'm gonna glue this dude up. Normally, like I said, if you want to, you can put some two-part epoxy in there. Whatever it is you want to do. I am going to put a gigantic humongous load globby of glue and all around that bottom piece right there and just on this edge because when I push it in it's going to smear this glue backwards which is great alright have I forgotten anything at all is there anything else I need to do I don't know 
too late now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. Come on, squirty squirt. Just so close. Just two more minutes. I'm almost there. Dad, gum it. Come on, just the last little bit. All right, well, I guess I'm not going to get any more out of this. Actually, yes, I am. I'm going to cheat just a bit. Y'all did not see me do this. Anyways. So, all right. Give me just a second. We're going to screw on our bottom hatches. And then I'll try to get the video back a little bit in ways. Just to kind of show it to you all uh, done up. And stuff anyways okay actually I think some did I forget to put a screw in somewhere no I didn't never mind I sure didn't anyways we're gonna put our our two doors will go in there uh, you'll screw them down with two screws I'm not gonna put mine in right now because I'm gonna also shoot my little demo video real quick and it's just I don't have to but the bottom one just goes boom and you're in it's kind of the weird way about the way this uh rifle's design is you know that's a big old hatch well, it's a big old hatch but not a very big opening if that makes sense you know it, this covers half of it but in here i don't know if i showed you let me see if i can get you all to see that See, that's the back of the metal barrel down there. So that opening, so you've got a passage that goes all the way forward, all the way out the end of the tip. And then you have a passage that goes right there, all the way through here, all the way up, so you can wire up a switch. So let's get that back on there. Straighten up some of my crap here. And your little con safe so you don't nobody thinks that you're going to shoot them with a uh, whatever anyways there's you some orange tips i'm not even going to comment on that anymore all right camera off my stand real quick come on focus dude anyways there it is and really I mean the assembly is probably 15 minutes if you're not talking through it uh, if I missed anything in it just let me know uh, I can answer what you know any questions you have or whatever but I mean, it's solid as a rock. Uh, I actually need to weigh this. Um, I weighed it the other day. It was a, a little over three pounds, but I was still waiting for the aluminum rod, which, I mean, I had a wooden dowel in there just hold it uh, as a placeholder and stuff. But, uh, yeah. That, hang on. Come on, focus, dadgummit. He doesn't like my, my shakiness, but anyway that's all the way yeah we there we go anyways there's your rifle i want to see them painted people send me pictures of these painted and done that's that's my pleasure in all of this is actually seeing them done seeing people you know what they've done with things their finishes uh just their takes on things it's 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 insane um but yeah all right Thanks, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.